Welcome to The Know, I'm Brian. So here's a crazy story to kick your Thursday off. We've heard a lot about DMCA stories, right? Usually they involve YouTube videos getting taken down for all manner of reasons. It, it has definitely happened to us. But recently, an indie developer DMCA'd their own game because apparently they're at war with their own publisher. It is nuts. The developer in question is a Malaysian studio called Ammo Box, and they announced on Steam that they were DMCAing their own game, a hybrid FPS RTS called Eximus Sees the Front Line from Steam. Why did they do this? Because they're trying to get control of their game back from their publisher who has apparently gone AWOL. Earlier this month, they made the announcement saying that the publisher, which is called the Game Wall Studios, all one word, so that should raise alarms right there, went off the grid and has not made any payment of the sale of the game to developers. Yeah, that's a problem. Ammo Box added that the Game Wall Studios has breached publishing agreement and their rights to distribute has been terminated. Well, the DMCA apparently totally worked. On Monday, the dev posted an update saying they managed to get access to their game store page on Steam. Now it's available for purchase again. They added, we're still in the middle of pursuing legal actions against our previous publisher, which may take some time. Yep, watch out the game wall studios. Next up, they're gonna publish games from Soldier Boy, I bet. All right, a pretty significant member of the God of War team is headed to Microsoft. Windows Central reports that Chris O'Neill, who was senior staff level designer for the game at Sony Santa Monica, has updated his LinkedIn page showing the job change. Man, patrolling LinkedIn should be like a full-time job. He is now working with Microsoft's The Initiative Project, which had started by Microsoft to make future exclusives, something of course that the Xbox One has really been lacking this generation. Now, we know that Microsoft has been on a studio buying spree, but it's also snapped up a lot of talent too to work on the initiative with O'Neill being the latest. No games have been announced yet from the studio or whatever this initiative is, but it's probably significant. So definitely good news. All right, there's an esports league for just about everything these days, but you might be wondering, yeah, but what if I want to competitively farm? Well, you are in luck because developer Giant Software just announced it's starting a farming simulator league for the PC series. There are going to be 10 tournaments across Europe playing the latest version of the game. That would be Farming Simulator 19, Jesus, and the best teams will compete for a total of about $280,000 in prize money with the final event coming at FarmCon. This is, we need to go to FarmCon. Let's, uh, all right, we're Let's going to Let's do FarmCon. Farm yeah. Let's get into this. Exclusives from FarmCon 2020. The final event is gonna be at FarmCon in 2020. Christian Amon, CEO of Giant Software said, we have lots of esports enthusiasts in our company who can't wait to show the world that farming can indeed be fun and competitive at the same time. We believe we found the right mix of real farming and fun to play game elements to ensure everyone will find it entertaining. So you know what? Good luck, may the best farmer win. I'm behind you guys. I'm stoked about FarmCon next year. All right, we got a little scoop for you guys about when Steam's next sale will be. It'll once again be the Lunar New Year sale. It's gonna start February 4th at 10 a.m. Pacific. It'll run for about a week, ending on February 11th, also at 10 a.m. Pacific. Not about a week, that's exactly a week. As a, yeah, thank you, that's my math right there. Now, it's a little bit earlier than last year's sale, which had thousands of games for sale on Steam, so we can probably expect something similar this time around. So if you're done cleaning out your backlog, now's the chance to make a whole new backlog. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, we've all cleaned out our backlogs. Totally, yeah, Mine, yeah, mine's down to 100, 150. All right, we got reviews in for Kingdom Hearts 3, which I still can't believe is real, but it is, and it looks like most people liked it. It's got an 89 on Metacritic, 88 on Open Critic. Last time I checked, pretty positive. Game Informer said that the game's story is a dream come true for devoted fans. The game picks up after the events of Dream Drop Distance with Sora preparing to square off against Xehanort. Game Informer added, after finishing it, I was delighted by how satisfied I was with the journey. I traversed worlds with some of my favorite Disney characters, persevered through challenging boss battles, and saw a triumphant finale that only makes me more excited for the future. In its review, GameSpot summed up the long journey that the series has taken, writing, In 2002, as Sora, I left Destiny Islands to travel across the universe and make new friends. In 2019, I brought old ones home, and I had so much fun doing it. 
Ah, that's cool. Polygon, whose reviewers apparently never played a Kingdom Hearts game, didn't like the ending though, writing, the conclusion of this story is tangled up in so many conflicting threads, each one a heavy burden on its hero whose smile now seems unnerving. Kingdom Hearts 3 is an example of what can go wrong when a series that once stood in contrast to its peers as a lighthearted alternative loses its way. Dude, Kingdom Hearts has not been lighthearted since fucking George Bush was president. I don't know. Ugh, anyway, the game releases tomorrow in Japan, and I'm very jealous of them. For the rest of us, it's out Tuesday on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And speaking of reviews, we've got yet another review controversy at IGN. This time it involves Resident Evil 2 and a reviewer who got a little confused in his playthrough. Here's what happened. IGN's initial review gave the game an 8.8, .8, but part of their reasoning was a little bit weird. The reviewer, Damon Hatfield, claimed that two of the game's scenarios were exactly the same. They had the same enemies, puzzles, and story. The only difference was, according to him, the protagonist you played with, Leon or Claire, that was the only difference. Specifically, he wrote, whomever you play as in the main game mode, Resident Evil 2 will largely be the same when you finish and switch to the other person. Most of the same events happen, and Leon Cla and Claire take extremely similar paths, meet the same people, solve the same puzzles, and fight the same bosses. This was a bit of a bummer for me. Well, it turns out he had just played the same scenario twice, just with different protagonists. IGN, for its part, later retracted some of the mistaken parts of the review and updated the score from an 8.8, .8, now it's got a 9.0. IGN added, we regret the error and really like Resident Evil 2. Hey man, you know what? We all make mistakes. I still feel guilty about not saving Laura and Chrono Trigger. One time I paid full price for Mag, which Ooh. I'm still kind of bummed at. Yeah, yeah. $60 for Jesus. that. Ugh. Anyway. That's all the news we've got for you today. Let us know what you think about all these stories down in the comments below. And for all your news from every corner of the internet, like this video, subscribe to the note, hit us up on the no.tv. We'll see you tomorrow.